Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we have an NA Sunday night event for you. It should be a good one because we're playing Burnside's Bridge. It should be a good one. I love this map. Haven't seen it too often. And then secondly, we have Pride of House. We've seen it two times today. One in the EU Historical Rules event, and now we're seeing it in the NA Sunday event. So it should be interesting to see the comparison between these two events. With that being said, on the Union tonight, we have Sussy Brigade, which consists of 5th Florida, 5th North Carolina, and the 1st Maryland. We have the Thomas Legion, a Beekoff Regiment, playing some more rights. We have the Shannon Doe regulars, we have the Irish Volunteer Brigade, and then on the Confederacy, we have the Pennsylvania Army, Pickett's Brigade, and I Corps, which consists of Anderson's Brigade and the Walker's Division. And with that being said, I hope you enjoy the battle. Hello, everyone! I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, we have Birdside's Bridge of Match, a map we have not seen in a long time. It warms my heart to see that this map is finally being played. However, a big part of it will be how will the CSA play? Because normally CSA won't try to defend the bridge here, this beautiful bridge. They will just go back and try to hold the stone wall, which is very boring in my opinion. Uh, hopefully the CSA will try to defend the bridge. I think this it makes this map great, uh, but we'll see. A lot of Union here. Sussy Brigade is on Union for the first time in a while that I recall. Unless I have a bad memory, which is also true. So, yeah. Uh, let's check the numbers here. So, numbers-wise, uh, it's a little favor towards the Confederacy. It's by 7. Uh, but not a whole terrible... Uh, not a big difference, though. Not a, like, it's the end of the world. Union can easily do this. And praise oh. goodness, the Confederates are defending the bridge. It is a good day to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, I love you. I love every single one of you CSA people that did this. We're going to see carnage the moment they try to cross the bridge. So, Union beginning to make their cross about halfway to the bridge. Now, this will be intriguing because usually the Confederates just pull back right away. So, Union will just charge the bridge right away. However, oh no, what are they falling? I hope they're just repositioning. Um, I wonder, though, if the Union will have to not charge across right away but we will find out here in a moment this first from here we have the fifth north carolina and to the right the fifth florida with 24th behind them let's see what they do here uh it looks like those confederates did reposition to the snake fence that's above there and it looks like the first union group they are going for it this will be fun Please, there be carnage. Oh, the first one shot guy goes down. Oh my goodness, they're dropping. <laughs> uh, a lot of Union actually getting through, but that's still devastating there uh, by the Confederates. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that's great. This is what makes this map great. Uh, we have more Union coming through. Right here, the 16th North Carolina coming through. They're not going to take too many casualties. But it appears that the Union has split off into two different prongs here. Maybe three. That officer got destroyed. Um, but Union splitting off into two prongs. A majority of that prong went to the left side there. Uh, with a decent, a sizable force going on the right. They do have a flag, so they will be able to get respawns in, which is critical on a map like Burnside's Bridge, especially when the defending team decides to try to hold the bridge. <laughs> so, we have Good Jester here from the 24th, and T Springer from 5th NC leading their men. Uh, Confederates repositioning to get in the gauge. Uh, we have i holding here. So that's going on on the left side. More Confederates repositioning to assist i -Corps. And Confederates are pulling in on the wrist so this side as well. We have PA engaging with what appears to be the IVB. However, the IVB is taking a lot of hits here. Um, I don't know how much longer they're going to make it. Uh, how much longer they're going to survive. Looks like the Union have begun to charge on this flank. Perfect timing. <laughs> A beautiful meme. 
not seen in a while. But it looks like Union's going to be able to win this. Especially because Union has a flag down here. Union being smart, having their flags kind of a little ways. Making sure they don't lose the flag deep in the Confederate territory. IVB got thrown back. Not surprising there. And I'm guessing we'll see Union respawns. Uh, at least the IVB coming across the bridge because they lost that flag. The PA is moving up. Repositioning back to their original positions to prevent so people from crossing the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brent's bridge is uh, crazy in real life. I couldn't even imagine. Uh, we have Scots here, the Major General of the Sussy Brigade, going across the bridge, not realizing. Those two go down just like that. Like, that's. Oh, I love this map. So unions getting the respawns with the flag, uh, which which is which is huge for the union. Having those flags across the bridge is pivotal to winning this map, um, because it's so hard to get across the bridge there. Like right now, these respawns, some of them will make it across, but it's going to be very hard when you have half the Confederate force holding up in that position. Again, mostly union reforming Confederates, repositioning themselves after getting wiped in that charge. To try to thwart the Union out of this position. It looks like i Corps here is leading this uh, defense of this hill here. Well, yeah. Let's see. Uh, we do have a couple Union getting across the bridge, though. We have two more, two more guys. Major Sevy. They will break in over there. Can you tell Bus is his, his voice lines are horrible? I'll relay the message, mister. Thank you. <laughs> They're about to run. No way they make it through. No way, no way, no way, no way. Ninja running out. Hey, Flag, is anyone else here? No, so Savvy and a small pin are able to make it across, and the rest of the Union is now beginning their push over on this side. Uh, shots being engaged on the hill. However, the PA will now have to hold against the IVB coming across the bridge. They got wiped earlier. Uh, oh my. Uh, was that a team kill? Was that a team kill? Fascinating. So IVB charging right into that Confederate group. I don't know if they were meant to or not because a couple of their guys went off. However, it did fail miserably. So that being said, let's just cut over this side of the fight here. It's really, it just looks like uh, their Union is just reforming. Union's kind of stuck right now. Confederate's doing a beautiful job of holding this position. Um, I cannot complain. So far, Union usually Union gets across the bridge. Confederates are falling back, and that's the end of that there. So, I Corps again leading this defense over here. It's it's gonna like the, this is the type of things that the uh, actually. Icor are getting very close. They're charging, and I don't know why they're charging. Um, this is a... The Confederates have such a secure position. I get why they're trying to charge them out so that they can secure the bridge. However, if the Union's not pushing, there's no need to assault. Because now Union... Actually, Union going down to engage. I thought that was going to be the Confederates who went first, but... Uh, I guess those out of lines and the deaths at the bridge had a big part to do with that. So that, that's huge there. Uh, I think Union is going to be able to hold here. Because, uh, they again, they have those flags at the bottom of the hill. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Union holding their ground. I think that was. Uh, do we have Union respawns on this side? Did that, fla that flag is getting respawns here. IVB getting their respawns pa just engaging them not putting up much of a fight we do have more union res we have a decent amount of union respawns at main coming 
over to die at the bridge of Burnside. So yeah, exciting, exciting, exciting all around. So, again, IVB reforming. The PA has a very a sizable force here. I, I do not believe that the IVB alone will be able to break that. I think this is probably more of a distraction force. Because, I mean, there's barely any IVB right here when they're holding up that huge force who we have coming across here. Like, these guys that are coming across um, that are dying out of line are killing their team. Um somewhat so we have another charge here uh mostly fifth florida here some ivb too actually mostly ivb some fifth florida and fifth nc in it oh beautiful artillery shot that was perfect timing look at the carnage as bodies are going down oh oh that union got charged in so, yeah, um, Union seems to be repositioning here. You can see Union has three flags here uh, running across, trying to get away. I think Union's going to try to make it a solid on the right. But here's the thing, though, right? If Union bunches up right, Confederates can just reshift uh, to help their friendlies out, and that's what they're doing. Like, the Confederates are doing a heck of a job holding this map, and now they're in a very dangerous position here. Uh, it's infantry fire. They're not taking a lot of casualties, though. Command artillery, uh, overshooting, I think, by a little bit. So, yeah, i -Corps just shifted over, uh, and they just repositioned along with the PA, and that's the end of that. So, what do we have over here? Uh, sorry, this is i -Corps. Is there more i -Corps over there? There's PA, and then more of i -Corps, so yes. I think this Walker's division over there, we saw Anderson's. This is the no like the first time I've seen the Confederates try to hold that there. And if we look at numbers wise, uh, they're dead even on a 200 man server. We have seen over time that maps, as more players get added to them, it's very hard for the attackers to break because the defenders can put men across the whole front and then easily reinforce. So it looks like Union's pushing far right. They're going up to the wall. However, the Confederates have readjusted almost instantly. Who is this? The, the Walker's division is the first to hold. PA still down there coming in, taking some flanking shots on the Union that are approaching. Anderson's brigade is now steamlining it straight into this Union force. Confederacy going down to engage, though. The Union's going to be able to win this, though. Uh, they just had more numbers. However, you see that Confederate force that's kind of huge that they are not over fighting in this melee. We also have more Walker's Division holding back here. Uh, it appears that they are going to be falling back to that stone wall. And I think, at least for the temporary moment, the fight over the bridge is done. We are returning to the old style of this game. If Union can get, if it, this is if Union can get their flags through though. I'd love to see server lag. Did Union get a flag through? They got one flag through. Two flags through. So, two flags get through, not a lot of men. Surprisingly, Union did win. However, Confederates got two of the Union flags down, and they're holding very, very strong here. On top of that, Union does have two flags, but they're getting shredded here. Confederates have guys on the stone wall and on the snake fence, and they're just going to get clobbered here. And you can see Union's falling back almost instantly. Well done there on the Confederates' part. The, the Union retreating Union is going to run right in some Confederates, though, that are out of line. Just on our ass. So what it appears is that because they got they couldn't breach this way, Union going down to taking losses, because they couldn't break them this way, they're going to try to cut across the hill. But the Confederates, uh, not letting that even happen, they're just charging straight through. <laughs> My man Cheeto knows what's up with the memes. So Union's going to get white. 
trying to come back. We do have more men here. Uh, it just looks like a mix of Union. But the rest of Union is back at spawn. Union needs to cap point um, as soon as they can. But it's going to be very, very hard. Um, because I think Union's about to lose every single one of their flags. Which, which is you and on the right side too. Uh, Union needs a cap point so they can stop the timer, whittle down the Confederates, force them to come out and charge them, uh, and not have to charge across themselves. Um, however, it'd be very hard to do that because all the flags are over there. Point is there, and they would have to run all the way onto the right, which would just be very, very hard to do. I Confederates have done a heck of a job on this map, but yeah, I'm not complaining. So we have Mustang and the IVB. Going up front, behind them we have Good Jester with the 24th Georgia. We have Scots here, uh, followed by the 5th Florida. And then at spawn, we have 5th North Carolina and the 3rd Arkansas. And then guys from other groups as well. Who do we have on Union Artillery today? Um, we have the Shenandoah Regulars and 5th North Carolina. Oh no, Tater got server muted. Oh no. I mean, Union Artillery is kind of hard. You can kind of see the Confederates moving on the hill. I'm zoomed in, too. Normally, they're like this. It's like you can't see crap. Uh, so, very, very hard positioning for the Union Artillery. In terms of Confederate Artillery, though, we have Anderson's Brigade. Um, look at, but look at this. Like, that's absolutely beautiful sounds for artillery when they're coming down the hill. And I think as time goes on, we will start to see more and more... At least Confederate artillery. We saw them once or twice earlier getting some good kills. But I think on this nest charge, especially it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be a bloodbath. Bloodbath, bloodbath, bloodbath. So Scott's here leading the charge of these men. I don't know if they're trying to relay a message, uh, or just trying to get across before the rest of their group gets slaughtered trying to cross. Scott's gets absolutely domed here. Uh, the two men behind him, one dies. The second one makes it. We have another one, though. He dies. On this, this is why the Union's going down first, is because they're getting so many out of lines. Uh, Union, <laughs> this is great, reverting back to the very, very old strategy that we, I haven't seen on this map in a while, which is sit on the stone wall and shoot down the Confederates. I, I haven't seen this done in a long, long, long time. I'm kind of glad to see it. Like, normally, when people are playing this, they maybe have guys up to this point in the wall, but with like a hundred, what is it? They have almost a hundred men on the stone wall. It is absolutely insane. So it looks like IVB is starting to charge 5th Florida in pursuit. The rest of the Union now moving into this charge. Here we go. Let the carnage begin. Confederate artillery, perfect timing. Your beautiful Confederate artillery. Uh, a lot of Confederate shots coming in. A lot of Union still surprisingly making it through. Um, and Union's going to get a large force onto that right side. Which is very, very huge. They need to get those flags back in order to have a chance at this. Somebody grab flags. Somebody grab flags. So yes, you can hear that man. They need flags. Union, I don't know how many made through. But I don't have bodies on. If I had baddies on, this would just be atrocious. And my game would be lagging. Uh, <laughs> but... So, Union's bunching up on this right side. We saw them do this earlier. The charge failed because the overwhelming Confederate force is up there. And Union only has two flags, too. Confederates have four operating. Um, so, an information flag will spawn in a men every 10 seconds. So, Union's getting a men probably every 10 to 20... Getting a men every um, 10, 10 seconds from two flags. So, two men every 10 seconds. Confederates are getting four men. <laughs> And that doesn't even consider the fact how many men the Union lost trying to cross the bridge. And then you get out of lines like these. Come on, Scots. You got this. Come on, Scots. Scots made it. Third time's the charm. So, yeah. 
Union getting destroyed. Um, but I, this happened in real life for the most part. Till the end. And the Union finally won. They broke through. So, after a while, those flags do despawn. Which is why I think... Yeah, we don't see them anymore here. If you um, look back, you can see that the Union... Well, you can't see it from here. But the Union does have those flags back. Because they did... Uh, you could respawn as them now. So yeah, Union's probably waiting to merge up and then go. You can see Confederates are readjusting. I presume to move to the there. Because they, they can see this slight Union force. Moving this way. Um, led by Good Jester here. And they can see that tiny force and they probably don't want to risk anything. Uh, maybe there's a flag. They don't know. So it looks like Anderson's brigade is shifting over to the right here. So 14th Tennessee is holding and the 1st Georgia is continuing to push through. So Union... In a little predicament, I don't know why these are going. guys are going up right now. The flags are gone. You don't have your team, unless it's a diversionary force, but the, the guys across the bridge are not coming across. I guess they got to knock down the Confederates to uh, a lower morale stage. Confederates kind of falling back, though, to that snake fence, which is allowing the Union to possibly get one or two out of lines here. So it looks like the um, IVB majority pushing up, uh, holding here. Confederates going down, taking losses. Uh, Union should be going down to breaking. I wouldn't be surprised at uh, any point within the next couple of minutes just because of how many out of lines they're taking crying across. Union getting a firm position here. Um, if we can see, look from the Confederate eyesight here. You can barely see the heads of those Union guys. And I'm zoomed in too, right? I mean, Union can't see the Confederates. So Union reforming, waiting to charge, and the guys across the bridge are now charging, and they're getting demolished on the way across. Uh, not all of them didn't even charge as well. Which is also a misfortune. For the Union. Ninja running up. He wants up kills. He wants up kills. All you gotta do is look to your right, Ninja. Oh my, never mind. Will Cosmic make it across? No, he does not. Alright, Ninja. Union going down to breaking here. Um... Union beginning to charge up on top of the hill. Um, Walker's division held this ground very, very well. So, yeah. Fantastic job by the Confederacy again holding the ground. It never seen the Confederates hold the bridge. Uh, this map might be turning into more back into a CSA bias map uh, because of strategy, because of this game here. Because again, you, CSA always falls back on this map. I don't know if CSA is doing better coordination, <laughs> which it appears they are. They also just have a really good defensive position that's hard to break. So as you can see, a lot of Union scattered. Probably like seven guys. They do have a flag up here though, which I presume is getting some respawns as well. I'm reloading. If we get fucked. So, Union's going to have to try again. Uh, I wonder if the Union will charge the left this time. Yeah, but... We could charge that group straight out. We yeah, need to. We need to. We should have done it five times ago. But we should have. We're going down right. the middle? We're going straight. I, that's what I was going to say. We, we go straight done middle. Get to the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's give it to them, boys. This is where we win the game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, as you can see, it appears Union might be planning to just full send straight at them. Which... Wow, that man saved the flag. Ninja going after a man. Oh, man, he's running away. Um, that guy gets the flag and gets back alive. Um, but, so it looks like Union might just be charging at the Confederates. That might be an option. You can kind of see the Confederates are spread out in the four or five different groups. Which could give the Union an opportunity to defeat in detail. However, Confederates have been effective in moving 
all game long. And numbers, sorry for the poor screen, uh, are in favor in the Confederates by four people, which, again, is not by a lot. So, Union trying to go hit the Confederates again, kill them, knock them through. Union probably is just trying to, like, charge in, break them, win. You know? Easy strats. So, you can hear them talk, you strategy. Best is they should just charge now, because they'll go down, they might go down to breaking if uh, you charge. If you shoot for a while, they'll give them an opportunity to reform um, and do movements like we can see by that Confederate force right there. So, I think most of Union, eh, never mind, we still got more Union falling into the stone wall. PA is going to have some fun here in a moment. Let's check out the Confederate defensive position in the meantime. We have some of Anderson's brigade. First Georgia holding on the far left here with the 14th Tennessee holding to their left when you look at it from the Confederate perspective. Um, you have PA holding out on the front here, repositioning them themselves to deal with shots from the woods. Uh, they aren't moving over by that much, though, which is smart. And we have Walker's division vibing over here. Um... A firm defensive position so far on the Confederates' part. Union beginning to move. Here it is. Oh my goodness, the carnage that's about to happen. We're just keeping it here. I don't even, like... Look at that. Confederate artillery, in my opinion... What's that? Oh, okay, that was a little, like... Confederate artillery... Maybe shooting a little early here. Uh, because you only got the the strong-headed people in the front. More of the bumps are in the back. So Union charging up the left of the hill. PA charging behind their back. So Union is going to get enveloped here and destroyed. I don't blame the Union for what they did. Confederates have done a phenomenal job. Uh, clamping down, preventing the Union from getting away. Uh, Union trying to get away with their flags at least. One goes down. Goose, run! Goose, run! Goose is going to get away. No way. No way. One Confederate soldier wants him bad. Mr. Pops here does not want that flag getting away. I think he's out of bounds right now. He's going to get that flag. If Goose stops running, he does. Go away. The out of bounds saves him. Mr. Goose is a lucky man. Saving that flag. Confederates are able to hold the line again. Well done there by the Confederates. Again, uh, it's very hard for the Union. Even numbers charging across that bridge. Artillery raining down on you. And infantry slaughtering you while you're coming across this uh, choke point. It's disastrous. If I had bodies on, it would be horrendous. So, uh... Union's probably going to have to do that again. They are going to do that again. I don't see why they would try to do anything else. Uh, possibly charge the group that's closest to the bridge first. Because what happened there is they uh, they all charged left. And there's a decent room and allowed the PA to flank them. Of course, this group will flank them. But they will have more guys hit that group and get their shots off before anything else. So, again... Confederates doing a heck of a job. Cannot complain. We have a Union Rambo. Let's investigate this. Small pen. Who we saw earlier in this game. Having an elite position. What are you going to do, sir? The Confederates getting ready. The Union to be who's this? Volks. What is he doing? He is confident in his team. That guy missed a shot. You could saw it was by him. What is he doing? Mr. Volks, continue going. And he goes down. Yeah, we, we might have to soften him up before we even try anything. That flag, Goose. So the unfortunate part, in real life, softening them up might work. But in War of Rights, they have tickets, they respawn. Um, so that's the unfortunate thing. Final push has begun for the Union. Union has four minutes 
and 15 seconds which means they have enough time to go from their spawn which is over there to the point which is right there two times uni needs to charge right now it's gonna take four minutes just to get there union is not going to be able to shoot down the confederates uh union just needs to keep charging and charging and charging and charging and charging um to knock the confederates down the last stand as quickly as they can because the problem is is while shooting will avoid ticket loss uh you're not going to get a whole a lot of kills which here we go you need charging again they need to do this it's the only opportunity they have let's watch the carnage from a new perspective where's the confederate artillery they're waiting a little longer oh my goodness absolute slaughter here oh <laughs> Oh my goodness, crazy, crazy. So, three minutes left, Union charging, Union charging up the left side. They're going straight for point, that's why they did that earlier. But again, if they want to try to get kills, they got to go on the right. I get why they're going up the left, though, to secure the point. They're, they're just going for the point, they don't even care. Union, actually, some Union getting through there. Uh, this is like Pickett's charge now. No, no, hey, Ninja's gonna go down. Ninja goes down. That's huge. Uh, signal lying that the Union made it. <laughs> so, yeah, the Union's just got to probably grug and go or bayonet and go is my guess. Let's see here. They have their bayonets on. Some are grugging. These guys have their bayos on. Maybe they got full kits. I don't know. I don't even know if getting a full kit is worth it because the likelihood that you actually make it across the bridge is, like, so low. Uh, in this scenario. But if you make it across, that shot is definitely useful. Well, that's 20 seconds. Uh, Malloy, still alive here for the Union. That was a good shot there. Two minutes left in this round. Absolute carnage. This poor flag bearer. Here they go. No, they got. I I guess I can see why they're forming up. Charging in one by. Actually, they might try to bait their artillery. Possible. Possibly. I don't know. I got a high pitch voice. Try to bait their artillery. Possibly. Uh, this man, this single man, small pen, an absolute savage. Go across. Go across. Go across. He's dodging shots left and right. No one can hit him. All right, we gotta make another charge at it. Like right now. So here they go, Union going into the charge again. Usually artillery hits smack dab right here. Let's just get one more beautiful view of the charge on Burnside's. I would not have picked up the flag there. <laughs> you can see all the bullets raining in. Artillery, oh my goodness. Devastation as the Union tries to get through here. I, I can possibly understand trying to get the flag, but... 45 seconds remain. Uh, Union still has a sizable force through. Yeah, Confederates are uh, surrounding more Confederate artillery. And that'll do it for this round, really. Um, that was That was fun. It must suck for Union, but a uh, new strategy is actually holding the bridge. So now Confederates countercharging across the bridge, which which is historical. So with that being said, that is the end of the Burnside's bridge round. I, that was just phenomenal. Uh... I haven't seen the Confederates do that in a long time. Actually, try to hold the bridge, and it made this match so much fun to watch. It must have sucked if you were on Union, but watching this match was so much fun. So much carnage, so much. I can't wait to see the casualties. But Confederates did exactly what they needed to do. Uh, even when the Union got through, they were able to readjust and uh, really just surround them. Union, um, unfortunately, just. Like, I think Union did what they were supposed to do. They charged across, they tried to get on the flanks, and Confederates just stopped them. 
So it was really no, like it wasn't that the Union did bad, right? It's just the Confederates did so well um, in holding the bridge. It's a very hard bridge to take. Union taking exactly 750, so 1,000 casualties. Union taking double casualties. Crazy. And with that being said, we'll see you guys in the next round. And here we go. The second round, Union are now defending. This will be interesting to watch, um, especially after last round. We'll see if the Union can try to secure a 1-1 here. But Pry House is a very, very difficult map for the Union. Um, unlike Burnside's Bridge, uh, it's uh, a lot more open. Confederates can attack from different angles. Union has no defensive positions, really. They have the stone wall, but Confederates can use that, too. I guess if you want to call, like, this middle road here the bridge, so be it. But we'll see. I won't be surprised. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to make any predictions. We saw the uh, Union win this earlier today as the, um, yeah, the Union won this in the European event earlier today, which was very fun uh, to watch. I mean, it's rare that Union wins on this map, so we'll see what they do. So Confederates mostly seem to be going down the middle here we have a contingent confederate force moving out this way it is part of the anderson's brigade uh, walker's division pushing up the middle here let's check out the union defensive position on the far union left confederate right is the ivb to their right is the 24th georgia holding in the middle here we have the first delaware which i um was gonna where's the rest of sussy there we go. Uh, we have TL there, and then we have 5th NC and 5th Florida with some skirmishers out here. So, a very spread out position. Okay, Confederate just died there. Um, so, yeah. And then, in the meantime, let's check out the Confederate offensive so far. So, we have uh, some skirmishers here from 9th Georgia. We have the 14th Tennessee, the Anderson's Brigade. Uh, you can see how they're engaging shots with Sussy Brigade. Uh, we have 6 Georgia holding on the stone wall. Is there anybody further back? No. Uh, and then out here, we have the Pennsylvania Army and Pickett's Brigade. With some of Anderson's Brigade holding this position. Smartly so. The Confederates are readjusting here the PA. Like, when you look at this from an overview. Oh, there's no hill there. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, there's there's a massive fail. I mean, you could kind of tell from the overview, but this defilade is insane, and it's well done. You could maybe see from over here, but the these Union guys here, they won't be able to see you because uh, of that defilade. So, very, very nice and unique push there by the PA. Uh, they will be engaging the guys on the stone wall, the 5th North Carolina. Who pushed far left here? It is the 24th Georgia pushing really, really far out left here. Um, so, yeah, it's only a matter of time before the Confederates decide to charge. But in the meantime, let's focus on artillery here. Um, Union kind of having a sucky, arty position here on this map because the hill, the point is on a little crest here. And it just goes kind of upward, flat and upward. Uh, Confederate artillery has decent positions, though. Wow, that was beautiful. If they do more of that. That's great. The already, CSA already has it a little better, but not by much. So with that being said, Confederates are in a shooting game right now, not trying to be aggressive, not trying, I mean, I, this is kind of aggressive, but not trying to push, not trying to charge. So yeah, you can kind of see the overview of the map here. I'm kind of surprised the Confederates aren't charging. Maybe they don't want to cap the point. I could see that, but they maybe just trying to shoot them down. I don't know. We'll see. I wonder if that snake fence is out of bounds. It probably is. Oh, that snake fence board will probably been used more by the Confederates if they could just swoop around the snake fence and then come on the flank of the Union. But so far, this is a repeat of the European event earlier today. Big lines, a lot of shooting. Union being a little aggressive here. Uh, IVB coming over, getting a volley off here. While the PA is getting reloads. It looks like they only got, like, two kills. Three, three. That was a beautiful officer kill there. You just heard him say that. Um, 
The only, yeah, that's the only thing with Rising Violence. You gotta be quick. You run up, you gotta aim and shoot. And that can be very hard. Uh, in this game. So. Confederates don't seem to want to charge in any distinct area. It appears that they are going for a shootout. If they were charging, they would have clumped up. Most likely. But they haven't done that so far. That was a beautiful shot there by Zeke. So it looks like Ninja is bringing his men up, either probably doing a rising volley. Beautiful shot by their officer. Oh my god, the Ninja goes down. They're volleying. DA is volleying. Uh, they get a couple kills. A couple kills are dealt in return. The Union's kind of spread out, it looks like, based off their flags. It appears that they are. So, yeah. A lot of it is just, um, yeah. Confederates, we, I mean, we saw the Confederates try to shoot down the Union today on the same map, do the same thing. Yeah, the defending team was only at taking an early stage of taking losses with uh, 15 minutes left, which is not good in this game. They were taking about 13 minutes to drop a, the enemy ticket level. Uh, which is crazy, so. So again, Confederates just kind of forming lies, shooting, volleying, destroying, all. Man, if Confederate artillery did that uh, volley, if you want to call it that, that'd be very, very cool. So let's see if we can hear anybody on the field. A lot of them, they're in their Discord calls. Are, oh my goodness. Oh, I guess Tater can talk. Oh, that's weird. Um, maybe because he's an officer. But Union pushing their artillery into the road here. They can kind of get nice shots. Kind of. It, it's a hard shot because it's flat. They got to get the fuse correct. So again, uh, numbers are even. They're actually favoring the CSA by two right now. Uh, is Union shooting artillery from here? It appears that they are. Where are they? And are they going to go for counter battery? Oop. We got an officer just a little far there. But. It appears. Um. I don't know. I think. I think volleying might be a little better at this distance, for especially in terms of suppression. Um, however, yeah, I mean, at least at this distance, I would think volleying is better than independent firing. It's uh, it's more cool, um, as a, as a fact, uh, to which I'm never wrong. <laughs> That's a lie. But no, volleying would seem to make more sense because you all put down, a, you chuck a bunch of bullets down. Uh, it's going to suppress the enemy more. Uh, it might not get more kills, um, but you will suppress the enemy a lot more. So, yeah. We have Goondog here. Ramboing here. Will he hit a shot? Goondog. So the Anderson's Brigade is uh, about facing probably to reform to deal with the sharpshooter. Um, it looks like that's what they're doing. Uh, it looks like the PA and uh, the Pickett's Brigade and some of Anderson's Brigade is pulling further out to deal with that group on the rock, which I think was IVB. Yep, Anderson's Brigade reforming to get more shots at the Union position. That artillery hit anybody? Not overhit by a little bit. It hit. It almost hit this artillery. I think it killed that guy right there. So, yeah. And interesting. This, um, for those of you who don't know, this is a hypothetical. This, this didn't happen at the Battle of Antietam. Actually, though, this almost kind of makes sense. 
because if I recall correctly, I don't shirk farms are there. The Burnside's bridge is there. Confederates won, and now they push them back to the Pry House. Uh, imagine if that happened in real life. That'd be whack. It probably wouldn't, though, because Union Burnside had so many more men. So much more men than the Confederates that holding on Burnside's. It was just a matter of time. We have Haunts here from the first Delaware. Crouching, standing back up. Probably scouting. This confederate wants to hit him, but he does not shoot. Haunts, crouching back down. Actually, he's keeping the point capped. That's what he's doing. So, yeah. Confederates, falling back a little more to that half stone wall, probably to get more cover. And we have a shootout. Yeah, so let's just look at the Union. 24th Georgia uh, appears to be just running out of this barn here, shooting, trying to avoid casualties, avoid ticket loss, which is understandable on a map like this, uh, especially when it's CSA bias. Anderson's Brigade, they pushed up a little farther here to deal with this Union group, the 5th North Carolina skirmishers uh, dealing with that group. It looks like we have the 1st Delaware holding here in the open field in that nice little defilade there, probably doing some rising volleys. We have the 16th North Carolina holding a little farther back. And then IVB reshifted to this wall with the 5th North Carolina. Where is the 5th Florida? Have I, have I missed him in roll call? 5th Florida. Yeah, I see a 5th Florida guy right there. So 5th Florida is in the mix of everything. So And the Confederates are still kind of spread out here. We saw Anderson's Brigade. Some of Anderson's Brigade. Holding with the Pickett's Brigade on that end. Uh, moving towards the middle, though. Actually, Pickett's Brigade is moving up with the PA. We might start to see some aggression here. Walker's Division hopping into the road, taking shots down the road, and then hopping back over to get their reloads. Uh, PA and PB are moving forward. I think they're going to try to be aggressive. I think they're, pre they're trying to cap and take the point, force the Union to come out. We've been sitting for nine minutes, eight, nine... 13 minutes <laughs> close enough uh well, 13 minute shoot off so far and the union hasn't gone down to engage according to the european event um union should be going down to engaged very shortly however the difference between the european event though and this one was that there were actually melees happening over at that corner which is which is crazy to think about talk there uh let's see so it looks like union ivb has pulled back out to those rocks there uh fifth nc holding in the middle here that rock 24 georgia still doing their rising volleys it's not doing uh they're not they're probably not going to hit these guys they're very spread out here in the behind a stone wall as well so yeah, Confederates have got to cap the point or charge soon. Preferably both. Because it's been 15 minutes. A third of the game. And Union hasn't fallen to engage yet. Which is crazy. Um, I hope. And so... So, the PA... Is pushing further forward. They're not on point though. They look. Are they run? They're volleying and running away. Uh, this isn't working so far. But Confederates need to be more aggressive. Like we're third of the way through the game. There are five stages, and you haven't even gotten through one of them yet. I guess you could say the Confederates haven't gone down too, but maybe there's some plan they're thinking of that I don't know. Union artillery getting a kill. Uh, Union going down to engage now. So, by this math, Union's going to hit breaking with zero minutes left on the timer. Which is crazy to think about. Uh, maybe they'll start to move out now that the Union's engaged. Because that's eight minutes off the counterattack. So, the PA and the PB 
are now moving back out to this duff laid position that we saw them in earlier. IVB now falling back. Seeing that. And because the IVB is falling out, PA and PBs are going to try to get their shots off as quick as they can. IVB getting over just in the nick of time, though. I guarantee there was a uh, one or two deaths there. But, uh, yeah. So IVB... So, IVB may be trying to bait them out, which is interesting. Uh, however, Confederates now beginning to push forward. They are capping point right now. It's about a fourth of the way capped. Anderson's brigade's pulling off that half sword wall. And pushing up to the PA and the Pickett's brigade. So this will be interesting. Ca Confederates are slowly I think Confederates are going to cap here. They have to. They got to force the Union to come to them. We're going to see some big charges here in a moment, hopefully. Because once the Confederates cap point, Union is going to want to try to retake this as quickly as they can. Because uh, when the Union recaps, they're going to go to the same proportion of tickets that the Confederates are at. The same percentage of tickets. So if Confederates have 80% of tickets and Union has 70, uh, if the Union retakes the point, they'll go up from 70 to 80% total tickets remaining, which is huge. And the longer that counterattack is, the more deaths the attackers are taking. So that total percentage of tickets left is going down. So instead of maybe 80% per se, the attackers could go down to 75% of their tickets left. And Union wouldn't be able to gain back as many tickets. And with that being said, our charges have begun. Union hitting hard into this uh, Confederate front. However, PA and the Pickett's Brigade is coming out from the charging flank here. CSA has won all charges tonight, but then again, they had that advantage of being charged at, across the bridge. We'll see if the Confederates can hold it here. Um, I think Confederates just went down to engaged here, uh, which is really good for the Confederates um, so that the defenders can't regain as many tickets. Union's going to be able to win in a melee. And so Union's going to be able to retake point here. Good job by the Union there. Being very quick, being very decisive so that they could retake tickets. Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie wanted this kill. And now he pulled back because he's a good soldier that follows orders. We still have 9th VA cab out skirmishing. York leading the artillery here. So you can hear they're talking about firing on point now. We'll send off. Oh, they're about to fire on point. That shot went short. That shot went over. Uh, I think that was Union artillery. No sign. So. Union capping the point and then falling back almost instantaneously. This is going to be a very, very, very slow fight. I I, I think Confederates are going to start repeating this action of capping point, forcing them to come out. Um, my guess. That's what I would probably do. So, yeah. Confederates reforming from their spawn here. You have the Anderson's Brigade holding to the left of the wall. To the right of the wall, you have more Anderson's Brigade. It's just all Anderson's Brigade. Walker's Division falling in behind. And I assume we have the PA and PB. Or at least there's the PA. There was a bit too much input from 72nd following ninja confederates beginning to push forward here led by Shido and MJ DKO. All right. I love that. Why is that man staying in the middle of the field for flag? On the tree! So it looks like they're holding on the tree, which I don't know if that's point. Point seems to be going down further than natural decay. Who is holding in the middle of the road here? T Springer holding in the middle of the road gets killed. Uh, justifiably. Not ju well, I mean, if it's deserved if you're spanning in the middle of the road like that. So. Tater. Looks like they're gonna push again, boys. Be ready. Yeah, point is falling down to not natural decay. Uh, but Confederates are taking point. It's moving fast enough to where it's not natural decay. Natural decay is just if no one's on the point, the point will just decay. Um, so yeah. 
Confederates being aggressive. They're moving into Cap Point again. Uh, this is going to be a blood fest. I think this is going to happen one more time. And if the point, if both sides go to taking the losses, I think that the Union will try to... If both sides go down the taking losses, the Union's going to try to charge and just knock them down the last stand. My guess. Because... Here's the thing, right? If both sides go down to taking losses in, the, in this next uh, counterattack stage, then they would go down to breaking, and then the Union would just be in a losing battle then. So my guess is Confederates are going to cap here, Union's going to retake it quickly, Confederates are going to cap again, and then Union's going to try to push the Confederates on the last stand because the point flips. So the attackers become the defenders, and they can get last stand. And if they hit last stand, the defenders, now attackers, can uh, take the point. And the counterattack and just one to go right there. So Union bunching up here, waiting to go. Uh, Confederates backing off. They are not capping point here. Trying to kill more time here. Very, very interesting. I'm kind of surprised. Uh, maybe they think now that they're at engage, they can try to shoot him down again. Okay, doing a rising volley. I don't think that got any kills there. I don't know if the IVB got any kills either, but then again, I don't have bodies on. Um, but that might show past bodies that died in previous volleys as well. So we, like, stuff like this, uh, unfortunately, if he dies, make it out, make it out, make it out, make it out, or die. Make it out, make it out. <laughs> Stuff like that when you're just running out and dying like we saw that guy do earlier. Like, that's going to kill your team. The Union's not doing it a lot, though. So, to their credit, Union is not rambling. Confederate's pushing further forward. That has to be on point. So, Craig is leading the 14th Tennessee. They are going to start capping point as they should. Union beginning to move forward. Interesting decision to move forward. I don't know why they're moving forward. I guess they're going... They're trying to hold against these guys here. However, the Confederates... Actually, the Confederates don't have great shots. They still have someone's shot. But first, Delaware appears to have done a rising volley. And Confederates now uncapping point. Uh, because they pulled off and Claiborne here is charging forward here. And then running away. And goes down. That's five tickets. Like, that stuff is going to kill defenders. But then again, Union's not doing that a lot. We've only seen... Five or six so far, which again, it's huge, but Union is just prepping for the cap. No other way to explain. Uh, I think Union would be more spread out, but I guess the 24th is still all the way out here. You're slightly raised up from what I can tell. Your legs are up. Oh, hey, now they're down. Girl. Hey, gosh! Uh, they're just having some fun there. They're vibing. Twenty fourth is trying to uh, figure out animations this game on different objects. Let's see a volley here by the twenty fourth. Just kind of spread. But other than that, they got the volley off. Nonetheless, I don't know how many they hit though, because again, those are rising volleys at a far distance. So very hard shots, Confederates. Two thirds of the way, the point is capping. They're pulling off again. Confederates gotta cap the point, um, unless they're trying to knock the Union into taking losses before they themselves go into taking losses, which is a possibility. But we won't know until it happens. So we have the TL pushing Rains. forward here. Steve. Trying to get these uh, skirmishers here. Ninth. Get that, that guy goes down. There we go. So they're going to get some kills. Um, however, Craig is chasing them over here. Uh, this is going to be a, maybe a skirmishing. And now four out of line deaths for the Union. Wow. One makes it out. That's huge. 
The Confederates not capping. PAPB. I presume this is them. Is pushing forward up to try to volley the Union. Unfortunately, though, Union has a very nice position on that stone wall. Uh, side trades. PAPB not taking many because, again, they have an absolutely beautiful defilade if we go to the stone wall here. Back up, I'm back up. Like, that is a beautiful definitely that they got. Uh, IVB beginning charging up the hill. Uh, just volley at the PAPB. They only got one guy on that volley. That was a perfect opportunity to decimate a Confederate group, and they, they missed those shots. They'll probably get another chance in a moment. Um, PAPB should save their shots. If the IVB is going to charge up like that, they should do the same. Actually, IVB is now falling back. Uh, Union volley from the stone wall, not getting many. I don't know how many the PAPB got, but. Yeah, look at this. Just a lot of rising volleys in this game. I don't blame the Union for doing that. Confederates, I, 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 eh, it is what it is. Confederates have more tickets. They could take more casualties. And if I die, it is a worse gun willing to take. So. This is a, almost a repeat of the earlier round today. Except, uh, more slow. Because, uh, it took the attackers 13 minutes to knock the defenders down a stage. And... In this one, it was 15 minutes. Confederates pushing forward again. Hopefully to cap point. I don't know if they're pre-capping as well. Is that their plan with this? So it looks like they're pulling it back now. They're trying to not cap the point here. The defenders are doing a heck of a job on this map. Yeah, they're holding back. They're not being too aggressive. They're forcing the Confederates to come to them. Oh my goodness, that was a bloodbath volley there. 24th got obliterated trying to come up there. However, there are still five of them. Uh, Ninja getting some shots off now. Getting kill. Missing that one. Point is going down. Union seem to have pushed forward here. The uh, IVB has pushed forward. They're probably preventing the cap. Uh, to prolong the black timer because the longer that black timer goes down the more advantageous it is for the defenders looks like we have a charge here by the walkers division surprising that they aren't going down the middle however uh, maybe they weren't seeing this right a union falling back instantly that's an out of line confederates pursuing union not realizing it yet on this flank here And now Union slowly trickling in here. I don't believe this Union. The Confederates finally being aggressive in a good way too. Kind of surprising too. They split the Union off because as you can see Union is over there. And now the Union goes down to taking losses because of this charge. And Confederates are going to win this charge. It's crazy especially with their reinforcements here from the Anderson's Brigade. We have Haunts here. <laughs> I can't, I'm dead. So, Confederates win that charge, knocking the Union down to taking losses. Uh, well done there by the Walkers division, and then the Andersons coming up to reinforce. Union's uh, Confederates have taken firm positions on all sides. That right there is going to cause your team to lose. Good man, that good man who started, no, no, keep running, keep running away. Oh my goodness, that artillery's flipped. The more you know. Uh, yeah, these guys charging in here. Uh, I mean, they're getting kills, but if they die, that's, how did that guy not die? <laughs> Black kill got the Confederates down to uh, taking losses there. How did that man make it out? My guy is a mystic shield that cannot be penetrated. Uh, so Confederates going down to taking losses. However, Confederates are ahead in terms of tickets. Oh, 
thought that was actually very similar. Thomas, right. So, I, uh, the Union's kind of just bulged up into this little road area here. Confederates just trying to shoot the... I think Confederates are sitting back and are, they're going to try to knock the Union down to uh, breaking very soon. Union retaking these positions here. Probably just checking to make sure there's no reps, and then they are going to return to their original positions. On the road... So, we have 24th doing what 24th things. Uh, we have IVB here on the stone wall with the 5th North Carolina. We have 5th Florida over here as well as the TL and the 1st Delaware. That's true. Holding over here, taking some casualties. Um, Confederates are, they're gonna, I don't know. It, this is so close. Confederates should try to charge over there again. That would probably be their best bet. Because Confederates do not want to cap the point right now. They want to try to knock the Union down to breaking and then try to push them. So I think a charge down this side again, it worked. It knocked the Union down. I I would try it again. Uh, and it appears that, is this Craig? Craig is pushing his men of the 14th Tennessee forward. They're holding there though. For the time. See, that was uh, Walker's who led, not Anderson's. It was Chegg is Anderson, right? Yeah. 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 We just seen Chegg historically over here, which is why I said his name. So, Confederates returning to their original positions. Uh, are we seeing another charge here? So, they are going to again charge on this little group here, and they're falling back right away smartly. <laughs> They uh, they do not want to take any casualties. Chief here, he won't die, though. He didn't die last time. He's not going to die this time. Maybe. <laughs> so, Union ticking and on a line there. Uh, Union completely abandoned. They're falling back. They, they're, they want the Confederates to cap point. These Confederates need to charge right now. Of course, they don't see what I see, so I can't blame them. But the PAPV are pushing forward here. Wow, PAPV got getting slaughtered in that body. So this is exactly the uh, the plan, right? The Union wants the Confederates to cap. They're going to cap, and Union's going to call them out and be aggressive as they can to knock the Confederates down the last stand. Um, Confederates should try to knock both sides down the breaking and then fall off point and let the Union recap. Because then it would cause the good scenario for the CSA. Because here's the thing, just because you start a counterattack doesn't mean you have to hold it, right? Um, so you could easily cause both sides to go down the break and a counterattack, fall off point, and force the defenders to retake just as they're doing to you right now. So now, as we could see, the Union is beginning to move, at least there and in there. And yeah, there they go, they're beginning to move. Union is going to try to be aggressive as they can. They have seven minutes to knock the Confederates on the last stand here. Um, this is. If Union can't knock the Confederates down the last stand here, Confederates will have a good shot at winning. It isn't guaranteed, of course. However, Union is far behind. They're going to have about a 45-second delay in time because of that. And Union's going to have to try to avoid capping the point here. We have Tater, Tater up front. Motherfucker, Tater! They're right there on the road! Fuck! You idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Sater <laughs> not able to get off his shots over more unions charging in not a surprise here at all <laughs> they're still talking about it so let's see here let's get a nice view here union just charging in up final sides they're trying the union cannot retake the point that is the one thing union cannot do in this situation uh, the minute is gone in the counterattack six remaining union wiping the confederates on one side however confederates still have a sizable force there Very, very intense here. Point is falling out of favor for the Confederacy. So, yeah. Union kind of holding. Confederates are still, they still have a sizable force here. They still have men sitting back here as well. Uh, and Confederates are going to be able to hold this, which is good for the Union. Uh, Union still have men there. Union going down the breaking. Uh, which is fine for the Union, honestly. Union, it doesn't matter. Your tickets don't matter so much right now. 
because you can always go back up to what the uh, Confederates had. And on top of that, uh, you're not trying to necessarily, what is it? You're try not trying to cap right away. You're trying to knock the Confederates down. So uh, that Confederate right there is not helping his team. Actually, he's getting a couple kills now. How is he also alive? And this good Jester gets a kill. Ninja getting a kill. So, yeah, Union now sweeping in. They got to keep charging. They can't stand on point. They can't cap point. Um, Union charging through this middle area, though. Yeah, Union's charging through the point, past it. They're just trying to engage the Confederacy here. I... So you can hear Sebi there. Uh, he's telling his guys to go forward. This, this is exactly like you can see him. He keeps going. Union cannot recap, or they will lose the game right now. Uh, actually, they'll go back up to taking losses, but 13 and a half minutes. 13 and a half minutes. Uh, 13 and a half minutes, though, on break on taking losses. A very low taking all losses, I presume. It's going to be terrible for the Union. Especially if the Confederates go down to breaking here in a moment. So Union is going to recap here. And go back up to taking losses. However. So that, that's. that's uh, Wow. So yeah. Points on breaking. Confederates did what they needed to do there. Union unfortunately capping there. Which I think is going to hurt them. In the long run. Maybe the short run. We'll see how long the Union lasts. But yeah, uh, that worked beautifully in the Confederates' favor. Uh, it's going to be very hard for the Union to hold point here for 13 and a half minutes. Union can tr I think Union could try to knock the Confederates down in the final push. That's the only hope the Union has right now. Uh, why is there Confederate artillery in the melee? <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's absolutely beautiful there. The men spawning on the flag, on top of artillery. What's a more war rights thing you've ever seen? That's absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, this is... Um, Confederates could try to shoot down the Union. Union has to stay near point, which is just going to make this even worse in terms of casualties on the Union. Um... I'm intrigued to see when the Confederates will charge, if they'll charge, when they'll charge. They will charge at some point. I wonder if they're going to try to knock the Union on the last stand here. Um, which, again, could be possible. Everyone's kind of bunched up here. Uh, especially on the Union end. I guess both sides are kind of bunched up. Like, look at this bunch. So, but this is a very hard fought around on both sides so far. I can't complain. It might be a little slow in the sense of a volley in terms of overview, but I mean both sides are doing well. Uh, it's it's the end of the game like this where makes it all worth it. So Confederates are slowly they're capping point right now. <laughs> they're on the edge of the point. They're wanting the Union to come to them. Very very smart. They're not pushing too far to where the Union has defensive positions. They're forcing the Union to come to them. When will they charge in? Uh, yeah, this is this is it. So like, oh my goodness, he just died. We have artillery boy. Did he, will he get a kill? No way! Please get a kill! Please get it! He got a kill. That's so huge. Complex charging gets killed. Uh, Union now charging in, trying to prevent the cap. So far, they are. However, Confederates, again, are entrenched in those uh, nice positions. So, Confederates are going to hold. It was not a Union full team charge. Now, the 1st Delaware and 5th Florida are charging in. They're going to get wiped by that Confederate force. More Union trickling in. That's just terrible. Union's going to get knocked in the last stand because people are charging in individually here. And they are going to die out of line which the Union does not need right now Confederates seeing the opportunity that they held those charges are now pushing into point to try to win the game here and now and Union going down the last stand here 
that's the final straw. This is a GG. A final push will probably happen in a moment, but uh, maybe not because Profiters just won those charge in a dominating fashion. Point is about halfway capped right now. Confederates holding on point. Union just bonsaiing in. Trying to maybe knock the, the Confederates to the final push, but even then, it's not going to change much. So, yeah, point is seven eighths of the weight capped. And that'll do it. Well done to the Confederates. Uh, a well fought win. There we go. There we go. That does it. So, yeah, Confederates, while uh, they were very slow at first, uh, volleying their way to victory, uh, they they saw it wasn't working, they adapted, they kept capping point, forcing Union to come out, and did exactly what they needed to do to win. Well done. In terms of the Union, Union did exactly what they needed to do. They accept for the fact that they capped on that last counterattack. Um, which caused both teams to go to breaking. That was their their only mistake. They should have kept charging away from point, charging towards the enemy, trying to knock them down the last stand. That's the only mistake the Union made. Otherwise, both sides fought fantastic. It was well officered. It wasn't people making dumb decisions. This event, both rounds as a whole, were well done by both teams. Stupid decisions weren't being made. Um... So yeah, I congratulate everyone. It was a fun event to watch. 1,200 casualties on this event. Crazy. With that being said, we will see you guys in the post-game interview. Here we are with our post-game interview after the NA Sunday night event. We had our first round on Burnside's Bridge where the CSA took a more original strategy, trying to hold the bridge instead of falling back, and they were able to win that way. And then the second round was on Pry House, and due to a huge union mistake of capping point when both sides were on breaking, uh, Confederates were able to just knock the Union down and take point and win that round. So Confederates won both rounds. We're going to introduce everyone with us tonight. We'll start with the Union players. So first we have Complex. Hello everyone. I'm Complex, uh, IVB captain. Um, so... Yeah. Alright. No. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is my bad. My pressure tag no, must up here. No, you're good. You're fine. Uh, next we have Scott. What's up, everybody? Scott's first Maryland. Let's get it. All right. Thank you. And then last but not least, we have McPhail from the Union. Uh, Captain McPhail with 5th Florida and uh, Sussy Brigade and uh, Justice for Booch. All right. With that being said, we'll move on to the CSA players tonight. We have York. Hi, uh, I'm York. I'm with Black Shoes Battery, the artillery for I-Corps. All right, thank you. Next, we have Cheeto. Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm Cheeto. I'm the general for AB, and I'm still Goondog's daddy. And next, we have Goondog. Uh, Goondog, 6th Georgia, Walker's Division, I-Corps. Uh, special shout-out to uh, Booch down at C-Block. And then last but not least, we have Leihei. Hey, uh, Captain Lee from Blackshear's Battery and doing communications with PB and I believe 74th PA for us tonight. All right. Yeah, Sweet. With that being said, thank you all. Uh, we're going to get started with the first round, Burnside's Bridge. The Confederates won, so we'll ask them first. What was your guys' strategy going into that round, and how did you react to the ever-changing battlefield? Uh, just getting back to our roots. I mean, that's something we used to always do is hold the bridge. Uh, Goondog, you should take this one right now. Cheetos mic's muted. He, he can talk. Uh, he was talking. I think you might yeah, have him muted. <gasps> York, you bastard. York, I think you have him muted. Like, personally. Maybe. Yeah. Off with his head. Yeah, no. So we uh, just go back to our roots. We used to hold the bridge and then really work around that artillery. Um and everything was just adjust on the fly. That was pretty much the basic premise of that strategy. Um, I think also a good thing, we actually force that map, force the Union to go into a linear battle, which um, is always going to be an um, um, advantage to the CSA side, the defender side, make it linear. I think one time we kind of baited on the uh, left side, which would have been the Union right side. We... Um, 
had a unit push all the way up almost to that um, stone wall in that far uh, CSA left side and kind of they, they kind of got isolated and, and beaten back pretty bad. Um, we took charge of both of our flags for a long time and I know that hurt. Um, it's just um, like just like Cheeto said it's it's like the old school tactic. All right. Any other Confederates have thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it was super nice being able to, like, just push our, our artillery up straight up on the bridge. Um, definitely helped with thinning out the herd um, with with the massive Union pushes. Um, and, you know, being able, to, like like Goondog was saying, able to make the, the battlefield linear, we were able to just funnel them into our, our lines. Um, did our absolute best to not give them much room to be able to move around. Yeah. Having the other regiments that were working with us be quick on the hop helped with that as well. Yeah, Confederates tonight, they were moving very fast to new positions. Uh, it, it looked good from an overview perspective. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, Union, what was your guys' strategy going into that round, and how did you react to the ever change of battlefield? Uh, the first one, it was to go left, and uh, we basically everyone goes left, IVB goes right, and then we were going to try to push up, but then uh, that failed, obviously. And then uh, we went right the second time, I believe, and tried to go for the stone wall a couple times, failed, and then we just started to go up the middle. CSA was playing good. They were playing close down to the road. Um, couldn't really push them up the hill as hard as we tried. Uh, like they said, the flags, that was probably one of our biggest issues is our flags went down and we couldn't get them back up. And then we're running really far from spawn while they got a pretty short run plus their flags up. So just couldn't get more men on the battlefield really than they could. Yeah, I mean, uh, the first time we charged over, I mean, it was just an unlucky loss there. We, were, we weren't able to get the, the, the Confederates. The Confederates were moving into good, good positions there. So they had us the first time. But every time after the first time we tried charging, that already would rip us to pieces so it would ruin half of our uh advances by shredding like half the lines that we're charging over so i think uh that already definitely deserves a lot of credit there for mowing our herds pushing across yeah you almost had it though in that first charge y'all did your left our right yeah you did a couple groups but i don't know i don't know if you guys didn't have enough numbers or what because we were able to reform pretty quick i don't know if it was just too quick or i don't know i was able to get you boxed in and put you guys out um i mean it was a good fight though down there yeah that was a, it was close with the uh i believe there's a confederates on the fence there they would be there right after we get already shot those guys would be there to clear off the remaining guys those guys on the fence at the bottom yeah that'd be that was... uh, ea and pb down there yeah, that was a strong position there. It was uh, probably the hardest position to push past there. And I would like to add also a shout-out to those guys, PA, PB. Uh, they did a phenomenal job. 100% on that one. Uh, Scott, did you have any thoughts of the first round? or? I mean, not really, uh, you know – we just kind of played like shit, to be honest. Everybody, the CSA played it like they were supposed to play it, and we got punished for it. We kept getting losing our flags, and we just couldn't get it back. And on that map, if Union U loses their flags and they're forced to charge the bridge over, especially with artillery now, like as we saw tonight, like it, it would take an act of God to be able to get back over and actually be able to do any damage or anything and get establish a foothold. Um, yeah, so I just got to compliment the CSA that they, they played it pretty much perfect. All right. Well, that being said, we'll move on to the second round. CSA also won that, so we'll start with them again. Uh, CSA, what was your strategy going into Pry House, and how did you react to the ever-changing battlefield? Oh, we tried to take it a little bit slower, um, get the tickets down. Do the taking losses deal. Um, unfortunately, we cap first. 
I don't, that wasn't really planned on. So we really said, screw it, we go with the plan. And I kind of threw some things out. And then that last cap, we have no idea who the hell did it. Like we didn't want to cap it. We were trying to tell everybody to pull off. We want to come down the you know, breaking. And then I guess some person was staying there and capped it up. And it was like, well, crap, here we go. So it turned into that weird breaking. They capped it while we broke breaking situation. It was just it was just awful towards the end. But luckily we won. But yeah, we were we were biting some fingernails on that one. Um, we got to, a, I know uh, we were getting to a point where we had to start getting aggressive. Um, I think um, the union put, I don't remember, I don't even know what unit was, uh, pushed all the way up. Uh, we actually had a unit fall back real quick and they pushed up and it, it just, uh, we were in, able to envelop them, uh, us and uh, some guys from 14th Tennessee. Um, then there was a couple of times where we were able to charge out like right close to where we'd be out of bounds. Uh, Union, my hat's off to Union because, you know, in those first, you know, first part of that battle, they played exactly how you got in it. That's a problem with that that map because the Union plays it right. It, it's going to be this long, drawn-out thing. Um, and, uh, you know, basically at CSA, you definitely – you got to get aggressive at certain times. And you got you if you see an opening, you got to take it. Yeah, uh, Artie was Artie was pretty useless on that map. Um, we gave one cannon to PB, and they were able to use that pretty effectively. And I think we flipped a cannon, but you know, three quarters away through the match, uh, we just hopped off. We just kind of became the the flag bearers. I think three of us had flags, um, and we'd have to definitely give a, a shout out to uh, you know PA and Walkers being really aggressive on that left side. I think Leahy can talk a little bit more about uh, the PA's movements, but um, just trying to take tickets out on that left side was the is really the one place where we could get um, some kills and get them down to breaking where we needed them. Yeah, we had Walker shifted over, 14th shifted over, and then Anderson's brigade or first AB shifted over as well, and uh, we just left the flags on the stone wall to make try to make it look like we didn't shift and. Yeah, uh, it was MJ's idea, so we were able to push, and they uh, got some good damage in on that side. And it was, uh, it was well, it was really well done on everybody's part. All right, any other thoughts from Confederates before we move on to the Union? Uh, just actually a quick question for the Union. During your guys' counterattack, right you know, when it had actually gone to that phase, what was kind of going through your guys' head, if you don't mind me asking? Because that was a great fucking charge. Pardon my French. Are you talking about one of those taking losses, taking losses? Yeah. I mean, basically, we were, we were turtling, and then we decided to, as soon as you tapped it, we were going to charge out. And the what we were saying in Steam Chat was to not stay on the point, to go past it. We didn't want to cap. We wanted to just go past it and wipe you guys. And uh, that did not happen. Some people stayed on point, and we capped, and that was the end of us. All right. Uh, with that being said, we'll move on to the Union. What was your guys' strategy going into that round, and how did you react to the average change of battlefield? Scott, do you want this one? Uh, what our plan was to do is kind of sit back and try to almost do like a turtle in maneuver and try to shoot it out. And if they were going to go to cap the point, we would just w give them the point cap pretty much instead of trying to defend it give them the cap and then we were going to push them off and then we were going to go right back to it. Um, looks like we kind of did away with that plan a little bit because we had guys that were pushed out and not everybody was falling back. And, um, but in the end, I think, you know, it was going great. I think we were doing good. And then uh, we, we kind of just, screwed it up there at the end by recapping the point instead of pushing forward but yeah that i i think uh we can we executed our plan pretty well and uh we just paid the price there at the end for it i guess my question to csa so you guys were talking about that left side there you're are your left or our left our left you're right okay so what what are you talking about when you said you got a lot of kills on us over there 
because it was me and Delaware were on that right side behind the defilade, and we took maybe, I mean, we never got wiped, and we were taking way more hits on you guys than you guys were taking on us. If if you're talking about your your right side, um, which would yeah. be our left, we wiped out two of your units over there. Are you there talking was, about when they moved way up, those two units? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't know who that was, but that was not Delaware yeah. in Florida. Yeah. We stayed behind the, the wheat bales there at the top of the hill. Yeah, and there we was that definitely one, to reload. Yeah, there was one that uh, there was one that pushed all the way up, damn near close to our artillery, and we kind of pincered them. Uh, the 14th Tennessee yeah. almost kind of baited them, um, and we just came in behind them and pincered them. They, they stayed way too late. Um, yeah, and I did see that. Another, there was another unit that you know, the rocks right behind that that took up place in there, and uh, they stayed for I, I don't know why they stayed, but they stayed. Um, and we took them. Now we eventually got wiped off, but um, we got we 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 uh, we took. A, I think we we got more than what we got. Wait, we took more than. Okay, I do remember that too. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, me, you guys me eventually Della, wiped, wiped us. I mean, yeah, yeah I don't wiped know you almost instantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys eventually wiped us out, but you know, I can't, it's kind of the damage is done on that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, just wondering about that. Because I, I, I felt we were taking more losses on the road than anywhere. Yeah, well, that, yeah, um, where there, there was a unit um, that was trying to volley. We kind of got into a volley match with you guys for a little while um, on that left side, um, which was kind of interesting. But you guys played it right on that one. I mean, you know, that's kind of what you got to do. You, if you get over aggressive, especially in early parts of that, that game, you're going to lose pretty quick as Union. Any other union thoughts? The Artie was on point on that right side. Your left, our right. Yeah. Because we were out in that rocks at the beginning, but we had two case shots came in, and so we were like, okay, we're getting out of here. Oh, yeah, that uh, that that back bush on, on y'all's right side, uh, we had that dialed in. But once you guys moved up onto that ridge line, I mean, there's the only thing we can really do is just throw canister. Yeah, we should have been up on the ridge line the whole time because up there we had better shots anyways. And more cover to reload in. I think Delaware, the Delaware was do, they were doing the volleys. They were coming up and doing volleys and then going back to reload them. We were doing independent fire. We figured that way you guys always got fire going on you so it would make you more suppressed. Yeah. That was just, a, that's kind of almost a kind of a drunken brawl at the end. That's usually how that one works. But yeah, you guys couldn't play it much better than that. I mean, other than, other than the very end, but, you know, uh, there's some things that will happen, especially when you got multiple regiments that are just completely out of your control. Yeah, I think we, instead of charging the point, maybe we should have just charged down one side or the other and just said, you know, keep going. I mean, yeah. we're saying keep going, but, you know, some of well, the yeah, units yeah. or some of the men don't, you know, they just start reloading on point once we take it. Yeah, be, be, yeah I would be careful second-guessing yourself. I thought you guys played that really well because even if you wouldn't have – even if you guys wouldn't have capped it, you still had, I, I don't know. I think even if you wouldn't have capped it that time, you know, something else could have happened. So it's kind of, I don't know. I mean, yeah, even on that last, that last push, I mean, it was, it was close. We, I yeah. think we had like eight or nine guys left over that were just able to like get the flags up and, you know, clean up. But that, the, all y'all's bayonet charges were very, either wiping us out or very close to wiping us out. Absolutely. All right. Uh, yeah. That was a good two matches to watch. I enjoyed it, especially Burnside's, because CSA played uh, like they were like back in the old days. It was fun. Any other comments, I guess? Casualties. Yeah, that was yeah. insane. It was like 350 to 745 or something. It's crazy. Yeah. That was old burn sides right there. That's old burn sides. I really wish that they would do that in pubs, just not fall back right away to the stone wall. It makes the well, no fun. well, we, we, you know, we tried doing that too a couple of times, and we we've, we've won one, one, then lost, one loss, and then you know, just kind of just everything stars line one time. I think sure. the key, like we. I I actually sent my guys to Artie after like half my Artie guys. I sent them to Artie after a while because I was like, we got to push them off that hill somehow. Yeah, yeah, they got they and they got pretty accurate. Uh, whoever was on those cannons, uh, one of y'all melted me, <laughs> but very, get, hitting very close to our skirmishers. 
might have been. Yeah, you almost wiped out 14th, but they just moved after a volley. It was right there on them. And I've I've played Union already on that map, and it it takes it takes a lot of skill to land your shots through all those trees. So props to them. Yeah. I've seen I I've seen some crazy shot that you guys try to do. You it actually went. I've never seen them go through those trees, but you guys actually almost hit us on the left side. On that or on the CSA far left side, but man, it was it was the first time I ever seen something like that before. Because <laughs> usually you can't get any shots through there. I know at the very beginning, some one of some of you guys were taking like sniper shots from our at our spawn, and we were getting we were getting hits. Like, <laughs> we lost a couple of guys like coming across the field, getting to the bridge. Oh, the shots probably never happen again. You can't, it's nothing you can count on. Yeah, I think on our end, it's just we we were missing today the people in the, the you know you guys probably know this, but in the Steam chat, you got to have like that person who's like kind of the de facto leader, like the unsaid spoken. Yeah. We have like a couple people, like I mean, Scott, you do a good job and everything, but it's just that. I think some people only listen to certain people as part of the problem. So like when Scott would say go, I'd go, but maybe some other units didn't. Yeah, it was like we all kind of agreed like, okay, we're we're going to go at this time. And it'd be like two units going and everybody. And then there'd always be one u big blob of, of a unit that would just sit around and not do anything. Yeah. Everybody else is going and stuff. And it was it just like people weren't really going as a group it was more like you know some people were going and then others were just kind of waiting and by the time they got there it was already over it was way too late or we just it was just not very good uh coordination sussy we were basically dealing with our like b squad or our c squad for some of our guys because the zoo wasn't there then also murphy wasn't there I'm still going to talk shit to Murphy. I don't care. <laughs> talk to his ghost right now. He's a war of rights moderator. And he deserves respect. Well, I'm the head moderator now since I, my name comes before his name. Oh, Do y'all remember when we could actually go across that bridge? Or at least go up to it? But now you can't get down the road without being out of line. That was a thing. Yeah, yeah. I think you could go. You could have gone to like the foot of the bridge or something like that. Just well, you like, could actually go across it or at oh, least halfway no, no, through no. it. And then they... Then they put it at the foot of the bridge, and then we would do the old school tactics like we did this match. And then certain people complained. The devs came in, and it's like it's too hard. They actually thinned out the, uh, not thinned out. They actually put more brush along the, uh, the riverside for the union to hide, and they pushed back the, uh, the boundary again. And it's like, damn. Why wouldn't they just adjust the tickets? Yeah, that, I don't. That know. would make more sense. Yeah, like, like, I have no it's idea. It's like, local realism. They're like, we're going to add bushes here that weren't here, and then we're going to do all this. And it's just like, you could just increase the tickets. Which would be historical and everyone can enjoy. Yes. Right. Well, do you all remember uh, Pry Ford, um, where the big-ass tree is on point? You, you know where the, the rock formation is on CSA left, Union right? Mm -hmm. the, there used to be a giant bush slightly off from that. And we would use that bush as an anchor point, and they took it away. But then they added a giant ass rock close to the Union side, so it's like, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> yeah, just in the middle of the uh, Antietam battlefield, the battlefield just changed in real life. That was actually historical. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a little map editing here. Forget <laughs> this. Yeah. Um. So yeah. With I guess any other comments before we call it off. This has been a fun chat. Good job for everybody. I mean, good job playing against the Union. It was a good fight. Uh, good job for the units to play on our side, P, uh, PB, PA, you know, and our guys in, in general. So good night for everybody. We probably should have picked different maps. Or a different map. <laughs> I mean. hey, I, 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 I told we, we y'all to Tito. stay with Roulette Lane. No, no, <laughs> no. We're not going to play Roulette Two Lane. Two defense no. maps, though. Roulette Lane is literally an auto win for the Union. God, I hate the Roulette Lane. It is it literally is an auto win. Or we could have like, picked like, Eastwood Skirmish. It's like, like as a Union, you've got to just, you got like maybe 100 yards to defend. That's it. And you literally just defend that L shape. And yep. as long as you could keep at least half of it up, you're going to win. And keep, and and keep the Rambos out of the house. Everywhere.
Keep the Rambos out of the house. Don't go in the house. Stay out of the house. And your mm -hmm. artillery literally has free range to just destroy any unit because they could see every single place on the map. It's literally like we should have played it, like I said, but maybe what do yeah. I know? Remember when the CSA I, I would just, always win that? It was a CSA yeah. bias, man. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, we run it like record time one time. We just charged, it was, uh, Booch was here, I remember that, and then like we just charged full left, whole team, CSA team, went up and took the RD and then it was yeah. over. That, that, that's the way you used to play, go around that damn pond, I go over there near the pond and come out near the hay bales. That's the way you used to play it, man. But, you know, it's the same thing with, uh, what the hell is that on uh, the Brit, the river crossing on um, um, freaking Harper's Ferry? Yeah. It used to be such a pain in the ass for Union because you'd sit whenever the um, AI artillery, you'd sit at that damn stone wall waiting for them to come off, and you get blasted by artillery every single freaking time. Yeah, defensive maps. Or I guess defense has become easier with more players. I guess that for makes sure. sense. You yeah, can guard more. I'll tell you what, whoever decided that throwing a cannon on the river crossing into the pontoon bridge so it's blocked off <laughs> deserves a medal. <laughs> I remember everybody that's was a... so pissed off about that. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, the the caissons. I used to love I used to love auto shirt, but I I can't stand that map in CSA anymore. I haven't played that in a while. Yeah, it's just so small, man. You just get it's it's really hard to do something, uh, come up with a good defense on, on auto shirt. I think it used to be possible, but now it's it's hard. I wish these events we could play like those bigger teams, you know. Yeah, we're, we're always 100 v 100 now. Yeah, it, it, probably most fun I ever had was when we did that 400 round 400 man on um Burnside's. Mm -hmm. that oh, was yeah, fun. That, was mm, that was sweet. Oh. So yeah. Is that when the devs spawned in that yeah, huge the... staircase of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> staircase I remember. Yeah. And then and spotted the... everyone fell down. I was that when did... they showed the horse and told everyone not to shoot it and then somebody did and then... I think it was after. I think they came up in a drill camp or something. Well, no mate. Bloody Lane. Been... Yeah, yeah, Bloody Lane. There you go. Dude, I was when they showed that in the drill camp, I was spectating and getting off the horse was weird. The guy would just be going full speed with the horse. The horse would just disappear. And then the guy would keep going, and then he just disappear. <laughs> it was funny. Um, so yeah, they they won't have it by Christmas. No, we'll say, dude, that'd be the greatest thing ever. Christmas greatest. of twenty twenty eighty. Yeah, yep. fair. I've enough. got a I've got a bet going with uh, Doug. With, when, uh, when I already bet him that they wouldn't have it by Christmas last year, and he lost that bet. But I said double or nothing this time. Them and Star <laughs> Citizens in a ro uh, in a race right now to get get to uh, beta. <laughs> Jeez. yeah so with that all being said thank you all for coming on everyone in this voice call if they want a social media link in the description of the video that'll be there check them out the uh all the regiments who participated in this video will also be in the description join them please do it's lots of fun and yeah with that being said please like comment share subscribe for more we're working on other things outside of recording events should be good coming in the future days. And with that being said, Goondog, do you have anything to say? Cue the music. <laughs>